I'm Tom Warby, student number S141188. I'm Bradley Hearn, student number S1404634. I'm Ashley Ford, student number S1405858. Daniel Baker, student number S1407056. Jordan Allen, student number S1407182. I'm going to briefly begin by explaining the learning aims and outcomes of our game that all help to meet the requirements of the national curriculum. First aim is to enhance physical competency of pupils' throwing skills with relevance to the underarm throw. Second one is to develop the cognitive skills by improving their understanding of the importance of teamwork and communication. And the final one is to appreciate the value of teamwork as a socially transferable skill. So we're, by doing this we're hitting the um, physical domain the cognitive domain and also the effective domain. So next, on to the learning outcomes. We determined our learning outcomes to help us fulfil the aims and objectives of the entire game. So firstly, um, all pupils will be able to make three consecutive passes within their team before scoring a point, and will also be able to state one benefit of teamwork and communication. Most pupils will be able to make five consecutive passes within their team before scoring a point, and also state two benefits of teamwork and communication. Thirdly, some pupils will be able to make eight consecutive passes within their team before scoring a point and they'll be able to state and also explain two benefits of teamwork and communication. So, to assess the, the physical, physical aims, what we'll do is um, visually assess each pupils when they're doing it to see if they hit each, so if they make three consecutive passes, five or eight, so we can visually see that as a teacher. And to fulfil the, the cognitive domain, at the end of each game, we'll basically get them together and physically ask them to explain and state the benefits of teamwork and communication. The adaptation theory is a theory that underpins the inclusion spectrum. Adaptation theory is the practice of managing variables or adapting them in order to achieve the desired outcome. The process of adaptation is continuous and dynamic. All good physical education is adapted physical education, show 2004. Firstly, this theory is split into four different variables. Temporal, variables related to timing involved in the activity. Timing can be slowed or quickened depending on task demand. And then we move on to physical. The physical environment can be adapted to facilitate success. Thirdly, the object or equipment. The equipment used can make it harder for participants depending on the ability level. Lastly, we move on to psychosocial. Variables that may need to be manipulated involve peer-to-peer -peer interactions. Situations should be made available for peers to work together to achieve a common goal. Okay, so this here is the inclusion spectrum. A name of the inclusion spectrum is to create activities based on aspects of disability sport and can be included in all approaches and this is reverse integration. Okay, so we considered all the different types of activities, um, open, separate, parallel and modified and the activity that was best suited to our game was modified. Um, modified activity is where everyone does the same activity with modifications that challenge and support all abilities. Okay, so in order for us to do this, we observe them all playing the game and then we analyse their ability and then made modifications in order to parallel with their ability. Throughout all the games, the teacher will need a stopwatch to keep the time and a whistle to control the game. Firstly, start with a small foam ball which will be linking on from the lowest ability game. 
Then we would encourage students to move on to a tennis ball to make it harder. Again, we need cones to mark in the area. Moves to differentiate between the two teams. And two standard benches, one either end, for the scoring terms. First of all, we'll start off with a large ball. This smaller foam ball can be added for an ad adaptation. Also, we need a stack of cones to mark out the area for the game. Also, some bids to differentiate between the two teams. And two small, two large bags for either end for the scoring zone. Okay. Firstly, you need a tennis ball linking on from the intermediate game. Secondly, a rugby ball to make it more sport specific. And lastly, a reaction ball to make it the difficulty harder. Also, you need codes to mark out the area and bids to differentiate between the two teams. Lastly, you will need four large hoops followed by two small hoops for the scoring zone. The scoring zone is two big hoops either side of a little hoop. Don't deny me Cause I feel it It's your heartbeat It's your hands Don't deny me From this feeling Cause I could never say goodbye No, I can't let you go So I'm going to briefly explain by talking about the STEP model. The STEP model was first introduced by Black and Stevenson in 2012 to help support the inclusion spectrum. And so the objective of the STEP model was to include all um, pupils based on ability and any disabilities that they have. Okay, so I'm going to start by explaining how we can use this model to make easier modifications or adaptations to our game. Okay, so firstly, space. What we're going to do is have no zoning areas, so that means that participants can shoot from anywhere. Secondly, we're going to have a bigger playing area, so there's more space and more time for them to make the pass. Equipment, we're going to have a larger ball and also a softer ball, so a larger ball meaning there's a bigger surface area, so easier to hold and also easier to make the pass as well. And roller boards, so pupils with physical disabilities, Roller boards are a perfect way for them to be involved with the session. On to people. So what we're going to do is we're going to match teams on ability slash disabilities. So we're not having separate games, we're having the mixed abilities all together. So what we'll do is we'll have the more able pupils on one team with a few maybe less able or physically disabled people and you'd match that on the other team as well to make it even. Reducing the team size as well, so for example, instead of having like say 5v5, as you can see in the videos, we like to do a 2v2 as there's more time on the ball. So the task will change as well. So the goal target is larger. So we've changed from rolling the ball into the bench, which is a long sort of narrow target, into a large mat, so it's easier for the um, say less able peoples to throw the ball onto the target area instead of rolling it. And lastly, every member must touch the ball before scoring, so this is a perfect way to include pupils who are less able, even pupils who have disabilities, so getting them to make consecutive passes within their team before scoring a point 
um, is good for inclusion. Okay, so now I'm going to start by using the step model that will help us make harder modifications and adaptations to our entire game. So firstly, space. We're going to introduce zoning areas. So instead of shooting sort of anywhere on the pitch, you have to be within a certain zone to score a point. Smaller playing area. So a smaller playing area means you've got less time on the ball, and obviously there's more participants in the game, so you've got to know when to make that pass, and you've got to make that pass efficiently as well. On to the equipment. So smaller ball and obviously a harder ball. So a smaller ball means there's less surface area, so they've got to be more focused on the efficiency of their throw. Roller balls. Of course, we're going to have rollerboards because we've got to keep on including the pupils who have physical disabilities. On to the task. So the task will change because the goal target is smaller. So instead of having, say, a large mat as a target zone, what you've got to do, three separate hoops, two big ones, one small one. Introduce a scoring system as well. So if you get in the big hoops, it's one point. In the smaller one, it's three. So we're reducing the target size of the goal. Three second rule on the ball. So before there wasn't a limit on the seconds you have to hold the ball for, but introducing three seconds means pupils have to pass the ball more effectively and need to know when to make the pass at the right time as well. Finally, onto the people. So we're always going to match teams on ability and difficult, um, disabilities to make everyone obviously included and ensure maximum inclusion. So um, we're going to increase the team size as well. So more players means they've got less time to sort of think about when to make the pass as opposed to having 2v2. 